Hello, television history. We are live with Firepower. This is actually live. We're literally in the studio right now, and we're so thankful that you've joined us. We're going to bring in the legend, Mr. Mario Murillo. Mario, are you in the studio? Yeah, Todd, I'm ready? here, and the Firepower is set up. I'm ready, man. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Here it is. We did it. We pulled yes, it off sir. here, we man. Yeah, we are, and I can see you. You can see me. We're together, and... Uh, we had a glitch. I believe in the devil. I believe he attacks, oh, yeah. but I believe he li he's a liar and he is defeated in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, that's right. He's not happy about what we're going to be talking about tonight because we're going to not only give uh, what the, some of the challenges are that we're facing as a body of Christ, as a nation, as a world, but we're going to give solutions. And uh, that's one of the things that we're very adamant about, Mario, right, is that uh, we want to make sure that the folks are equipped, they're set up for success, and uh, we believe what the Bible says. It says we have the authority to trample on scorpions and devils. We have the authority to pull down the strongholds. And so that's what we're going to do on tonight's program. Yeah, we sure are. And I want to add that one of the things would be great is if all of you, since we had a bit of a, a delay on getting to the show, if you would share it right now with people that we are on that our first real episode, and we're going to be here every Wednesday at this same time, and we're going to be on different platforms. So it would be great if right now you took a moment and shared and let people know, especially since we had a bit of a technical difficulty getting started. But uh, as far as solutions, what you just said, Todd, is so essential. God doesn't make us aware of problems without reasons to be excited. And there are two things that are not right. good is to have people that believe there's no crisis because that's yep. denial. And there are people that right. all they have is crisis and that is defeat. And we're not going to have defeat or denial, but we're going to have victory and we're going to triumph over the power of the day that we're living in, the circumstances. One of the monikers that we want you to learn is this one. The end times are not happening to me. I am happening mm. to the end times. We're not going to sugarcoat what's going on right now. We're going to talk to you about the moral polarity in America, uh, the Pride Month, all that's going on with Trump in the indictment, and then talking about Tucker Carlson and the significance of what he has done to the media because it, it has something to do with all of us. So that's what we're going to talk about, and I'm going to let you get started, Todd. All right, let's do this. So, you know, number one, we want to talk about uh, polarizing of revival and perversion. Bug sacks that getting there delivered. Is no go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I was would, just saying, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing these people getting delivered, getting healed, coming to the altars hungry. And so while that's happening, there's also this other polarizing. I mean, it's like one side and then another side, totally demonic on the other side. You kind of mentioned it in the intro. We're in what they're now calling pride month, which I thought this was interesting, Mario. You know, June is the sixth month of the year. We go into June on the first day of June as we're in this quote unquote pride month. What happens? Joe Biden falls. He falls on the stage. And I just thought, I said, wow, there's something to this. There's more than him just falling. Literally, pride comes before a fall. Here we see supposedly the U.S. president falling on this platform as we go into this month. What do you think about that, Mario? You know, that graphic that showed part one side of the screen, because uh, it threw me off there for a second. One uh, graphic with showing the tent crusade on one side of the screen and then the other side. And what people are celebrating, everybody is celebrating something. Some are perversion, some are revival. In the same city, Los Angeles, you have 60,000 homeless people. You, you have a city government that is bent on doing policies that don't work. And yet at the same time, there are mass baptisms with 5,000 people down at the beach because the Lord is moving. 
and where the Bible says where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. Now we need a roadmap. And the problem is in too many pulpits today, we are given everything but a roadmap. And that's why so many Christians are illiterate. So when we're talking about polarity, here's what we're saying. The, the, the casual are the casualties. If you're casual, you're going to be a casualty. You got to be on fire for God. That's the answer. You have to be on fire for God. In warfare, Todd, it is the soldier who is not firing his weapon that is most likely to be taken out first. The Christian who knows his Bible, understands his values, has an opinion and a training. You know, here's what uh, Patton said, that all no bravado will prevail in the face of an educated bullet. And that's what we don't have in churches, educated bullets, people who know their rights according to the word of God, their authority according to the word of God, and their duty as according to the word of God. We love to quote part of a scripture, right. but we leave parts out that are uncomfortable, but we got to leave it all in. And I'm gonna, let me cite the scripture, and then I'm going to throw it right back to you. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, it said, no one has left house or brethren, wives, children, or lands for my sake and the gospel, but that they will receive a hundredfold in this time. So you'll hear the evangelist who wants to uh, make it about money that will quote the hundredfold verse, but they'll leave you powerless because it says with persecution. Now, just because it says with persecution doesn't mean that we ought to have a dour, long face, fear, persecution's coming. What that verse is telling us is in spite of the persecution, we're going to get a hundredfold. The Christian business, the Christian family, the Christian individual can expect God's protection, guidance, and even to thrive in times of darkness. But to deny that the darkness is there and never reference it is is absolute folly and we shouldn't do it that's right you know i was reading the scripture in ephesians 4 many of you know it it's the one that talks about the fivefold ministry giftings i'm just going to read just a little bit he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god and it, it goes down to continue on in verse uh, 14, where it says there's a lot of people that are going to be tossed like children. They're going to be tossed to and fro. And the reason is because they don't have sound doctrine. They don't endure sound doctrine. It's your point, Mario. For the last 30 plus years, I really believe what's been happening is exactly this. There hasn't been the sound doctrine taught. And so when people hear no. the sound doctrine, they're, they're confused. They're like, what is this? I haven't heard this. All I've heard is uh, encouraging messages. A lot of churches uh, have used one scripture in a service. And let's just be honest, that's the, the whole Bible that a lot of people in some of these churches got for that whole week. And, and it didn't even right. really get into the, the meaning of what no. that scripture was. So it, the problem is there's a lot of people that have been drinking milk for a long time. And I, I honestly blame a lot of the pastors for that uh, in a lot of these yep. large churches around the country. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And so what's happening is they're being tossed to and fro, and that is the challenge in the American church because they haven't endured sound doctrine. What say you on that, Mario? Okay, what I say is that Jesus said, the, the wise, the, he said, the foolish man built his house on the sand. But who is yep. that foolish man? It said, he heard my word and didn't do them. Now, this is not a contrast between a Christian and a non-Christian. They're both believers in this parable, but one doesn't do what he believes and the other does what he believes. Doing what you believe is building your house on the rock. That's what protects you in the modern times. And there's another one. In Matthew 24, it talks about what the end times will be like. And Jesus says something very important. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Well, wait a minute. I thought salvation was by grace and that not of yourselves, lest any man should boast, not by works. 
So what does that verse mean then? It means something important. It's what we're talking about in this fire pro, uh, power program. We want those of you that have suspected something is going on that doesn't make sense. Why is the world so strong? Why is the media so unified and galvanized? And why is the church so seemingly weakened and, gal and divided and unable to attack the culture or, or mount an attack that is meaningful? Well, there it is in Matthew 24. It says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. From what? From everything that Jesus described. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquake, famine, all of it. The Christian can maneuver and have a roadmap and walk through it and be saved from it and be strong. Yes. But we can't promise anyone a painless Christianity. Those of, that are talking that way are lying to you. The ones that say it isn't going to hurt, it isn't going to cost you anything, it, it's going to weaken you and make you bewildered because Here's what's going to happen. So you're going to run off of your spiritual map. Let me explain what that means. You have these ideas of how life ought to go. And as long as God lives up to your expectations of how life ought to go, you will serve him and love him. But when something happens that doesn't fit the narrative, it doesn't go along with what you thought the Christian life would be like, you're immediately blown out of the water. But the shock is, that you didn't get that map from the Bible. It didn't come from the word of God. It came from someone's opinion who had detached themselves from the true meaning of the word of God. And that's what we want to do on this broadcast every week is say, look, this is what works. This is what makes you strong. This is what gives you victory in the face of everything. You're saying is there's going to be spiritual warfare for Christians? Yeah. We're actually going to have to, to, to know how to fight with these weapons that the Lord has given us in the Scripture. That's what we're going to need to know. So it's not going to be. Now, I come from a couple of churches over the years that when you would talk to somebody in the foyer and you say, how are you doing, brother? They'd say, blessed and highly favored. You know, that's it. And meanwhile, you'd find out under the covers in their life that there's actually a lot of challenges and things going on. But they almost felt ashamed. Mario, to share these things because they didn't want to be, uh, you know, gossiped about or, you know, looked down upon uh, if they were to actually share the true things that they were going, you know, going on in their lives. And what I found as a pastor is it's actually happening to pretty much everybody, uh, but people just don't really share it. Meanwhile, we're supposed to exhort one another, encourage one another. We're not supposed to kick people when they're down. We're not supposed to, to beat people up when they're at their lowest point. We're supposed to build them up and exhort them. But why has this not been the culture in the church in your view? My view is simply this. We're in an arms race. That's how we look at it, Todd. This is an arms race. Why is the Russian arsenal of atomic weapons as advanced as it is today? Because their intelligence tells them what the Americans are building. Why is the American arsenal so advanced? because our intelligence told us what they are building. And the polarity that I'm describing is people are giving in to the devil. Satanic worship at this point is not the backstreet stuff. The idea of grooming children to be uh, attacked by adults immorally is not in the back streets anymore. It's front and center, what's going on? That's their version of maturing in their faith. That's their version of being devoted to their belief. So when they were worshiping Satan on the Grammys Awards, they were merely living up to the impulse that our master, the devil, has required of us a new level of submission, a new level of overt action, that, and we're seeing it everywhere. Conversely, God is doing the same thing. He's saying, I don't want make-believers. I don't want fair-weather uh, saints. I want individuals, and I'm calling them to myself. I'm drawing them to myself to work on them, to make them the weapon of choice that are uniquely designed for the challenges of today. You know, let me tell you, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit will work together to help you raise a family in this setting in this current world at this time, given all the mess that's going on, 
The Spirit of God will instruct you and guide you in the way you need to go. That's what's important. You know, and I want to say one more thing. I know what censorship's all about. And there were times where I've been on other programs where I wasn't allowed to say what I really believed about stuff. And I was told Mm. in advance, we don't want you to deal with these subjects. And after a while of protesting and saying, no, I don't think so. And it was especially damaging because I felt that they were being hypocritical because they were openly criticizing Biden, Nancy Pelosi, blasting them, but avoiding the whole entire other half of the spiritual warfare, the false prophets, the lies, the false doctrine and the perversion that was being used by the enemy to make the church absolutely nullified from being effective. That's why I I said, you know what, Todd, why don't we build a show and we'll call it Firepower and we'll say what needs to be said so that you will defeat the devil and you will stand and you won't know just simply a few items here and there. And we're not just going to work you up and say, aren't the Democrats demonic? Aren't the left? They're evil and let's all get mad. No, let's get equipped. (laughs) Let's get strong. Let's get intelligent and let's go out there and see God win the battle in the marketplace and in the social arena of America. That's right. Mario, you're definitely not someone to be censored. I'll tell you that right now. I've known you for a while and, uh, I'm glad about that because, you know, every time I've I've been to churches and I know you've experienced this as well, where the preacher has said, look, you can get up there and say everything. Just don't get into this subject. And uh, don't tell that to Mario Miller myself, because we will get up there and speak about Mm. that subject, whatever the Lord puts on our heart. And I think that's what the folks appreciate, Mario, because they want realness. They want authenticity. They want truth and they don't want censorship, you know. And so uh, some of the things that are the takeaways of what you're saying here. We have to learn to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. We've got to decipher. We've got to learn how to test the spirits. We've got to learn how to know what you know what's in the word of God because faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. Well, if you don't know the scripture, you're going to be ill-equipped. And so this is what I think has happened is a lot of people have relied on gurus or other people to get their information instead of going into the scripture themselves and having that daily relationship with the Lord where they inquire of the Holy Spirit and they say, Holy Spirit, is this you? You know, what, what are you saying? And we, I really feel like it's imperative in this hour, Mario, that we know the voice of the Lord. We know how to inquire of the Lord and we walk in the unction of the spirit. Would you agree? Two things that are going on that are you just brought up that really are hitting me. Number one is, yes, they're uncoupled from Scripture. But here's what people who have habits, who have addictions, look for is shortcuts. They want a shortcut. They want the instant cure to what's going on with them. So when you're watching an emotionally unstable individual comes into a spirit-filled life, they'll glom on to a Jezebel or a false prophet because they want someone else to take the responsibility for their decisions. They want to, they don't want to stand up and say, it's going to be me and Jesus that worked this out. Now you can be my pastor and you can be my advisor and I, I need counselors. But one thing I don't need is a voice that replaces God's voice in my life because that's when I get in danger. That's when you marry the wrong person. You make horrendously horrible decisions. So what's happening is it it works with the prophetic. Let's talk about that for a moment. If a prophet can give me a word, how much time will it save me? Now, not every prophet is false. And not every word that is given is false. But you can see that once you start down that road where, man, they I got to get my Christian horoscope this morning. I've got to hear mm. from this website where this guy claims that God told him this, God told him this. I've never seen God be such a blabbermouth as he is currently in the church. Now, the second is deliverance. Because I do believe in demons and I do believe in casting them out. But the same rule applies. If if someone could lay hands on me and I can instantaneously start eating right and losing weight 
instead of facing the fact that I need to be disciplined and I need to come under discipline and I need to daily walk with God. So the same thing is going on. I want someone to cast out this habit of smoking. I don't want to have to go through withdrawals. I want someone to get rid of this uh, emotional problem that I have. I want to embody it in a demon and blame a devil and then say, if you cast this out, I'll be immediately better. The problem is, why are they going through multiple deliverances? You watch mm. it and they're going after one, after another, after another, after another. People don't like this. But here's the victory. The victory is this. Paul's number one enemy was not Satan. It was his number right. two enemy, but it wasn't his number one. In the book of Romans, Paul made it extremely clear that his number one enemy was his own flesh. And he realized that the war of my spiritual warfare is not between the devil and me, but it's between God and my flesh. And if I handle my flesh according to the word of God, that's when victory upon victory will occur and deliverance will come that is meaningful. And that's, yes. that's why I believe the people are looking for these shortcuts. Well, it, it, it reminds me of the cliff notes in college, remember, or in high school, like you get the little short answers and you try to, you know, I don't think there's any way to fake it in, in Jesus. Like you're either saved or you're not, you're either on fire or you're not, you either believe in the truth or you don't. That's why he says literally lukewarm will be spit out. He says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So I really believe this is what you're saying is that there's no shortcut. We've got to go through the process, but in that is where the growth comes from. In that is where the spiritual maturity comes from. And that's what the Lord uses in our next season. It's like, it's like David with his lion and his bear, you know? Right. And now we have a, a Zoom call, right? I mean, we're on a social media. We're live streaming here. Yeah. But regular church is important. Live yes. in-person fellowship is essential. And a lot of folks left that. And it seems counterintuitive to sit here on a video and tell you you need to go to church, but you do. But there's another side to it that, that people don't like. You need to leave your church. If your pastor refuses to address the current immoral status of America, if she, he or she is standing in the pulpit and avoiding the crisis of what you're actually going through on your job with your children at school, you need to leave that church. But there is a church for you. Somewhere there's sure. a man or a woman preaching the word of God as it is taught and saying, in effect, you know what? Uh, it, we can defeat the culture. We can do it in Jesus' name. Now, yes. I'm going to uh, add one more thing because I, you know, you got this is your fault, by the way, because you're asking too good a question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is your fault. You know, <laughs> you, you look at it and Matt Walsh said something about public school. And it's something we really need to consider whether we should homeschool our children whether we should move them from public school, because Matt Wall said, there are parents that say, I, I want to defeat the, I want to fix the public school system. So that's why I've kept my child in public school. But Matt Wall said it this way, it's not you that's fighting the public school, it's your child. And your child is always defeated by the teacher. And, and it's not a fair fight. And he says it's a suicide mission and it's not their mission. So we look at it and here's what I, what I feel that many Christians say, I know my church is not feeding me. I know my pastor is compromised, but that's my church. And I'm looking right. at him. I'm saying, look, you have got to wake up here. This is where your yes. kids are going to get a touch from God. And they're either going right. to get truth or they're not. And the other thing is that church better be winning souls because that is what for me as a soul winner, something that's essential. So that's it right. comes down to one final statement and, uh, and I'm going to quit here with this. All right. You need to, you need to look inside your own heart, sir, ma'am, brother, sister, you need to look inside your own heart and see if you aren't the author and finisher of most of your spiritual crisis. It isn't a demon. It isn't a lack of a word, a prophetic word. 
but it is a personal choice that you're asking God, give me an easier way than the truth. Give me a less dangerous brand of Christianity than the one that's in the word of God. But here's what happens. Mm. You don't get any of the benefits. You see, there is a great victory in God. There, when you put on the full armor of God, you become indestructible. When you're under the anointing, you are unstoppable. But those things are never going to be granted on the cheap or to someone that God detects doesn't mean it. And when you do right. mean it, he'll bless you. He'll give you power. He'll trust you with wealth. But that, my friend, is the firepower. That's what it is. That's right. That's right. There's so many actions in what you said, you know, get plugged into a spirit filled church that's on fire for God with a general that's actually standing, uh, get into the word of God, you know, regularly, you know, um, feed your right. soul. You know, it's, it's a, it's a lamp unto our feet. Uh, you know, hear from the voice of the Lord, you know, learn to hear from God, uh, test the spirits. I mean, there's so many things that were said in this first segment. Do you want to move on to our second subject, Mario, or you yes. want to close with some yes, thoughts sir. on that last first segment? <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's no, move on to the done. second one. Let's so, talk about uh, there is Trump an being indictment. indicted. Unbelievable what we're witnessing yeah. here in the United States of America, where it literally looks like communist Russia, you know, or China, where they're now going after uh, political rivals. We have the Biden administration that's gone after the Republican nominee, basically, that's going to be the Republican nominee for president once again. Uh, yet here they're, they're indicting him. The Justice Department's going after him. And, and what's so wild about this, Mario, is these these same charges that are against Trump could be said about Biden, could be said about Mike Pence, could be said about Barack Obama. Others have had these same types of classified documents. What's going on here? OK, here's what's important. The Trump indictment is not about Trump. It's about you. It's about you and me. Mm. The, yep. the, the, the first thing that ought to be on your mind is this. If they can do this to Donald Trump, what can they do to you? And how do we know, you know, I, we've had so many dress rehearsals and this is where uh, the folks at Facebook and YouTube can start getting the willies. So we're going to, we're going to avoid saying anything stupid on this show because we don't want to anyway, even if Facebook right. didn't have that restriction, but we've had dress rehearsals. There's too much of what's happened in the last five to 10 years that seems by design and it's designed to test the waters. Can we lock down the church and let's see what they do. And we failed that dress rehearsal bitterly. Yes, we did. We let them yeah. lock us down and we didn't need to be. The second right. thing is we're watching the transformation of civil rights where the, the, the educators are screaming for the power to manipulate our child without our knowledge. And they're literally, as one leftist said, you have no right to tell teachers what to teach. Parents do not have that right. Well, in California, the law that just passed, and this gets back to Trump, I'm not wading into the weeds here. It gets back to Trump because in California, it is now unnecessary a parent cannot stop the LGBTQ agenda from being taught after third grade. And every student is required to teach it. Now, I have a lot of pastor friends in the Bay Area. They blasted me when I started writing my blog and calling out leftist politicians. Now they are the ones going down to the school board meeting and telling right. the leadership, how is this possible? that my child has to take this course and you will have a special day where you will do an LGBTQ uh, training and the parents won't know. It'll be done without their knowledge. All right, now what is the test with the Trump indictment? What does it represent? This is important. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican right now. It doesn't matter if you hate Trump's guts. You're an idiot. If you don't see that we cannot stand for this to be done in a two-tiered justice system, it doesn't matter who it's done to, because this is clearly, you know, it's funny that they all say no one is above the law. 
And the people who are saying it, right. that say no one is above the law, are all currently living above the law. They're not following their own mandates. They're not required to. And this is what you're saying. Well, Biden did it. Uh, Hillary Clinton did it. So and so did it. They all did it. But here's what uh, here is the wake up moment. Here is your wake up call. This is not about Trump, it's about you. And it's about you realizing that the Department of Justice has gone rogue and the American people have to do what the American Constitution said, what Thomas Jefferson taught that the people need to do when their government goes rogue. That's what we need to do. That's the only option we have. You, you got it, Mario. You know, there's a lot of people, I really believe they've been looking for a pastor in chief. You know, they're looking for Trump to be perfect in every single area. Otherwise, you know, he doesn't have my vote or I won't support him. But I always think about what is the other option though? So basically by you saying, I'm not going to support Donald Trump, you're then okaying what the far left is doing, which then brings us back to the topics that we've been discussing. We're now in third grade. I mean, let, let's just think about this. Could you imagine if there was a teacher in third grade that took some kids and baptized them? Uh, that wasn't a Christian school. You know, this is just a public school and baptized yeah. them at recess. You, could you imagine? That would be like the craziest story in the country. They would be talking about it. The guy would probably get arrested for doing that. But yet you can you can tell a kid, hey, you can be the opposite sex and that's OK. And, you know, we're going to push uh, to where you eventually get on some hormone blockers. And even, you know, I don't even want to get into how how barbaric some of the surgeries and the things that they're doing right now. And somehow people are just, you know, glossing over this like this isn't a big deal. Mario, I've been a pastor for many years. I'm going to tell you, depression comes from this. Uh, you know, there's all different types of repercussions from a family standpoint that goes on for years. And when this child grows up, what, what are they going to deal with when they realize that when they were, you know, 11 years old, they made a decision that would affect the rest of their life. And now they're not able to have children. They're not able to have a regular life because of something that they made a decision. And the state and people outside of their home, not their parents, outside of their home were able to make these types of decisions and now their life is affected for the rest of their life. Does anybody talk about the repercussions when it comes to that type, that type of discussion? And see, once again, the, you know, let's go to New Jersey for a second. In, in the uh, grammar school in New Jersey, a teacher put up a poster for kindergartners. It was a bear, a mama bear with rainbow colors. And it says, if your parents don't accept you, I'm your new mommy. And that's standing there in the hall. That's exactly the signal. Notify us. Now, again, in California, they want to implement a bill. This bill is about to go through where if your child, they deem him to be unsafe, they are a trans child who's unsafe, children's welfare can come, take the child right. from you and put it in a safe home until the situation is resolved. Now, I don't understand. Now that's outrageous. See, Todd, that's outrageous. But yeah. what's outrageous is that pastors are still not rising up in unison against it <laughs> in you. California. They're, they're well, everywhere still not. blows my mind. Yeah. You know, and, and you look at it and you go, all right, uh, what, will it take before they speak out? Because 10 years ago, a lot of them said, well, it ever got like this, I would definitely speak out. And it did, and you didn't. Then you said, if it ever got like this and so, then I'll speak out, and they still didn't. What it is like now is so beyond the pale that it, it literally is impossible to wrap your mind around the silence that is so pervasive right now. But again, this is firepower, so we have a solution. <laughs> Greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And God has always worked through a core, a minority. It, it says two will set 10,000 to flight. So you don't need to look at us and say, oh my God, it's, the nation is going down the drain and nothing I do matters. Listen, when God's people decide, they get together and they decide to believe in the power of God 
to transform the situation, they instantly become a majority. In fact, one of the reasons, Todd, that we don't understand the Bible is because we don't understand the context of how it was written. Let's go to Hebrews 11. You know, faith, in the 1980s, the faith movement exploded in America. I'm being very frank here. And it became about money and cars and getting bills paid and understanding. And there was some very good teaching. But along with it came a, a, a priority on money and bills getting paid and health that was a reflection of the culture because the 80s were the good times. So naturally, we had a good time in Christianity. Now, here we are in 2023, and let's look at what's going on. The moment we're in is so dangerous and so volatile and so explosive that you read in the Bible, suddenly verses occur to us that never made sense before. Let's, right. let's look at one example. By faith, Moses left the safety of the palace to be identified with the Jews in slavery. Some received their dead back. Others stopped the mouths of lion. Other armies became bold and fiery in battle. So faith takes on these different aspects. In one moment, faith was this. In 2 Corinthians 10, Paul said, my hope is that your faith will grow, that it will transform into something. All right, let's deal with it. We're living in a hard time. We're living in a time when the president's been indicted. We've got to believe. We've got to believe that God is able to help us. Now, you know, I want to use one more example. In Acts chapter 4, in verse 23, after the church was silenced, Todd, uh, Peter went back and it says he told the people everything that the magistrates had said. Now, right. watch what I'm, where I'm going with this. If a law was written to silence the Christians, Peter talked about it. If yeah. there was a threat that you're going to go to jail for being Christian, Peter talked about it. Why aren't the leaders talking to the people? But that's not the end of the story. Again, a little minority has the power to do a great work for God, even in this hour. That's right. why Acts 4.29, Lord, look at their threat. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may preach your word. This is not an hour for us to be silent, backpedal, leave the cross, the blood, and the resurrection out of our preaching. This is not an hour to be ashamed of what we know to be true. This is an hour to raise our voice even louder, more emphatically. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may preach your word while you stretch out your hand to heal and let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Trump has been indicted, but we have the power of prayer. The government has gone crazy, but we have the power of God. The promises of, and the, of God supersede the threats of the world. And that's where we have to stand. Not in, in any kind of denial, but in victory in Jesus' name. Is now sending him a cease and desist letter because they're worried about the viewership that he's getting, and they say he's somehow breaching some contract. I really believe, Mario, what they were trying to do with Tucker Carlson is silence his voice uh, prior to the 2024 20, uh, election. I think they're looking out right. and seeing who are some of the most powerful voices in the media today. Who are the people that are speaking the truth? Of course, Tucker is right there at the top of the list. So what do they do? They take him off of you know Fox News, and now he goes on Twitter, and Fox doesn't like that. So why don't you tell us what's going on a little bit with that? Well, what we're seeing now is the first real kink in the armor of deep state media. They've lost power. It started when Elon Musk took over Twitter. And the, actually, prior to that, with Joe Rogan going on uh, the show that is now going around the world. Now, do I agree with everything these men believe? No, I do not. But I do believe that what I'm looking at is that there was this death grip on information that is now loosening. 
and it's important. And I believe that when you look at the Bud Light, the Target, uh, now the, the, the ability for people to not buy a product and boycott it that are on the right, the sleeping giant of conservatives, is starting to gain traction. And I promise you that corporations are sitting up and taking notice. Now, here's what yes. Tucker said that I think is important. He said the current viewpoints that are the narrative that's going out, this is what we got to talk about. The narrative that is going out right now is unsustainable because it's a lie. It's impossible. Right. And because it's a lie and it won't work, it's going to go away. It's going to collapse on its own merit. Now, nearly 100 million views on Twitter show that he can have that power. And suddenly Fox has to silence him. And Fox has to come wow. out of the closet. They, they, they literally have to come out of the closet and say, oh, we've been hiding as this conservative bastion, but now it's too late. Tucker's too powerful. Exactly. So now we really know what's going on. But here is, here's yes. something. The Bible says that he that rebukes will in the end gain more favor than he who flatters. What Tucker is modeling for every pastor in America is he's killing the lie that telling the truth will split your church, uh, ruin your income, mess with you, and wipe you out. It's just the opposite. You have no idea how many people are sitting out there. This is why when I look at these Gallup polls and these Pew reports on church attendance, I don't believe any of them because they try to say America is down to 50% Christian. No, I actually believe the percentage of Christians is up. What's happened right. is many of them have finally grown weary of everything they're watching in the local church. And again, we don't want to... We don't want to frame ourselves on Firepoint as being anti-church because I got to say this no. again. It's because I'm adamantly in favor of pastors and churches that preach the truth, give altar calls, try to win the loss and let the Holy Spirit move. I'm all for them. But we have developed, unfortunately, an entire generation of what are zoos, basically, where Christians are spoon fed in cages and are kept from being affected. So now right. Tucker is a model. Get out of your safety zone in your pulpit. Begin to preach the truth as you see it in the word of God. People are going to rally to your side and you'll be able to overcome a power structure that seemingly was impossible to overcome. That's right. You know, I always think of it too as a pastor, Mario. I mean, one day I'm going to stand before the Lord and I don't want to, you know, say, oh, I didn't preach that part of the Bible or sorry, God, I didn't teach that part. You know, leaders are held to a higher standard and, you know, we've got to speak the entirety of the word of God. And this isn't about likes or follows or how big our ministry can get or, and I like what you said too about uh, what Tucker modeled, because it is something I was even thinking about it before you said it is, you know, the, the long term, the truth is what is going to prevail, that that's where the sustainability is in speaking the truth, preaching the truth, uh, a chasm yes. or something that's just a, a temporal thing where you tell people what they want to hear or you promise a bunch of things that are untrue. That may be for the temporary. But what happens is that goes up and eventually it comes down because people realize, you know what, we've been had, you know, this isn't real. So right. even though sometimes it may not be popular to say what's true in the long term, there's sustainability, there's credibility, and you're doing the right thing. And by the way, when you stand before the throne of God, you're going you're gonna to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, right? Yes, you are. And here's, this, here's another addition. And I, I really want to speak to preachers right now and ministers. I really want to talk to you right now. Uh, it's all about the message, the word of God. It's all about the word of God and the message. The Bible says in the book of Acts, the word of God grew, grew, and prevailed. The Bible also says, Paul said, I am bound, meaning he was in prison. I am bound, but the word of God is not bound. The first thing Peter said, send miracles so that we can loudly preach your word. 
So here's the fact. The word of God, the message you are called to carry, the word that Paul in his, virtually his last thing he ever wrote before he went to heaven was to Timothy, where he was talking about preaching the word instant, in, in season and out of season. And he said, essentially, he said, we need a truth surge. You need to amplify, intensify, widen, broaden, and deepen the amount of truth you're giving people in a given sermon. In other words, concentrate more truth into every message you preach because the day is coming when they will not abide sound doctrine. Now that is a, is a key statement that we need to understand. The reason that Tucker Carlson has such a vast following is because of the concentrated amount of truth in what he is saying. I don't believe he's a conspiracy theorist. What he says makes sense. You think about it, you realize, boy, that makes sense. Take that to the 10th power and you have a Bible preacher under the anointing. They're capable of dissecting the culture in a way that Tucker Carlson cannot. They have a, the ability for miracles of wheelchairs being emptied, blind eyes being opened, people getting right. off drugs and off alcohol because you preach the word of God. So this is what I feel is this. We are not in a defeated state in America. No. There are millions of Christians waiting right now, waiting for a clear call, a Bible-based movement that will stand up, tell the culture exactly what we feel, and we will see a change. Bud Light's yeah. just the beginning. The movie Jesus right. Revolution is just the beginning. All right, the Asbury visitation is just the beginning. These are the yes. first mercy drops of a coming storm of blessing on the nation. But you who are watching can be a part of it. You see, right. you don't have to join a club. You don't have to, how do I say this? You don't have to get the favor of your denomination. You just have to have a heart that is sick of what's going on and hungry for God to speak to you and to tell you and to show you what to do next. That is what that's it's right. about. And, and that's why we want to take all the latches off. There's no gatekeepers with this show right here. You know, we're not, uh, Todd and I are not beholden to anyone. We're not sponsored by Religion Incorporated. We are no. absolutely two guys that know God and know what we're saying is true, right? <laughs> you. You take it. Absolutely. Dog. No, a hundred percent. And the thing is, we're not claiming to have every answer, but you know what? We know one who does and his name is Jesus and he's the King of Kings and his Lord of Lords. And I know this, he's, he's very consistent. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And he's talking to his people. And that's who we're talking to on this show. And we are the ecclesia. We're the body of Christ. It is high time we stand up. We're not defeated. We're on the winning team. We serve the God of heaven and earth. And it's, it's go time. So I'm excited because yep. not only are we going to talk about what's going on in society, our culture in the church, but Mario, we're going to give solutions each and every time. And I want you to be encouraged and just know, listen, there, there is reinforcements coming, okay? The Lord is, is right. not done moving. He's not done in America, no. and there is a move of God that is happening. In fact, Mario, you're going to be going out to a couple places with the tent. Colorado, why don't you talk about that before we go? Yeah, and I want to I want to just finish what you said, and I'm going to do that, and thank yes, you for the opportunity. 10,000 people, soldiers, were sent to arrest Elisha. When they got to the door, it was Gehazi, his servant, that saw the soldiers and immediately screamed in total fear. And immediately Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And suddenly innumerable fiery chariots on either side of the mountains were, uh, had these 10,000 men completely surrounded. Paul said That's the right. same thing. He said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be opened. This is what we want for you. We want your eyes to be open, to understand the victory that there is in God, the possibilities that are still before us. The Christ is actually an opportunity. With your eyes open, you can see it. Now, two cities that we're about to impact, Colorado Springs. You realize that 
Todd, we almost had a thousand people signed up, Come on. volunteers Come on. coming to that tent crusade. Yes. We're going to do the fire and glory tour that Lance and I have done in Florida. We're putting together a living proof crusade at night with fire and glory during the day. And to find oh, wow. out more, okay. you just go to mariomarillo.org. Just go to mariomarillo.org. Now, Los Angeles. Uh, we on. we are putting it. on a very special. Yeah, it's a brunch at Victory Outreach in Chino on July the 8th at 10 a.m. And it's free, but you have to register. <laughs> what I am saying is, is that we're going to have this brunch and you can register your group. But here's what it's got to be. Pastors and leaders. Now, we've already had a surge of people register, but we still have room. You July 8th, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And that's Victory Outreach in Chino. And uh, once again, if, if we don't have the code, you can go to mariomarillo.org and you'll see how to register for that brunch. Now, I want to ask you a question, Todd. Okay. All right. I think that we need to be serious about the power of God in meetings today. Yeah. Signs, yeah. wonders, and miracles in all the yeah. meetings. Yeah. And I think, you know, and, and talk a little bit about what you feel is a prerequisite for those things to start happening. Yes. Well, there's, first of all, you got to be consecrated. You got to be sold out. You got to be all in. You got to have an active prayer life. Um, I, I really don't feel like this is a time where we can be messing around, Mario. I'm just going to be honest. This is a time, you know, we mentioned a lot of very serious things. We didn't even get into half the things that are going on, not even a, a, a small percentage of what's going on in our world right now. There, every single day, I hear of tragedies. I hear of all different types of things that families are going through. This is a very serious time. And so we need to be all in as believers. And you mentioned finishing well. And I'm so glad you said that because that's been something God's been putting on my heart for a long time. In order for us to do that, we've got to have an active prayer life. We've got to be in the scripture. We've got to be in the word. We've got to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And we've got to believe. You know, I'm just going to tell you this. Uh, a few weeks back, Mario, it was one of the most... Um, Honestly, uh, jaw-dropping moments in the ministry that I've ever had in all the years of ministry. The Lord called me to the carpet, and he said this. He said, Todd, do you believe what you preach? And I said, well, yes, Lord. He said, no, no, listen to what I'm saying. Do you believe what you preach? I said, yes. He says, because you're saying that you can do greater things, according to the Scripture, than even Jesus did in his earthly ministry. You're, you're saying that cancer can be healed if you lay hands on the sick. Do you believe that, son? And I have to tell you, I was taken back and I, I wept about this for a day because it was really a, a very defining moment in the ministry. He said, if you don't believe what you're preaching, he said, get out the ministry, get out the ministry, go do something else. He said, because either you're all in and you believe it. And when you're at the altar and you're laying hands on someone, you're believing that that person with cancer is going to be healed. You're touching the hem of my garment. And so I said, yes, Lord, because you know what? Many of you know my testimony. I was stabbed nine times, one in the heart. And I went in the presence of God. I know for a fact that God is real, 100%. And so if anybody should be able to believe that, it's me. And I'm telling you, I am all in. And I really believe we all need to be all in, Mario, because it's a personal relationship with a Savior that's available, so real, so, so real in our life. And if we will take this season to truly go all in, we're going to see those miracles happening. And it doesn't have to be some big-name preacher. Every, any person who is all in, who believes, who touches the hem of the garment, and who actually believes what they preach and believes the Word of God, you can experience those same miracles, signs, and wonders. I believe you will. Amen. Yeah, with the, we got about two minutes left, Todd, and I want to zero in on something. Okay. We want you who are watching now to be encouraged yes. and to lose your fear and your confusion. Now, as I said, there, there is denial and there is those who are, are in dire need of disaster and conspiracy theories. We're in, we're in the radical middle. We believe in solutions, but with our eyes open. We see what's going on, but we also know the surpassing power of God 
to make things right in this season. So I'm going to say a prayer over you, and I want to ask Todd if you'll agree with me in prayer. Yes. I want to say a very important prayer right now. And don't be surprised. I'm, I'm just basically your addicted evangelist. I have to win souls. And if you're watching and you need God, you need Jesus, you've seen the, the absolute absurdity of religion. Don't let it get away from you. Get the truth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm looking into this camera and I'm saying over every child of God who is watching that they have the authority, they have the power, and most of all, they need to know they have a father that loved them so much that he bankrupted heaven to save them. Let that truth come home right now, that God is with them, that God is in them, and that God will continue to bless them in his mighty name. And that power will never, ever let up or be defeated in the face of everything. So we want to thank you for watching. And Todd, you got 10 seconds, buddy. Nine, eight, <laughs> say <laughs> right. goodbye to the people. Hey. Well, it, listen, we're going to be doing this next week. Same time. Join us here for Firepower. Remember, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go out there, make disciples. That's the main thing. And we love you guys. We'll see you again next week. God bless you.